Alright guys, so today I was playing on Force Sensitivity and I dropped a 22 kill game on Pseudo Harbor. This is actually uh, pretty rare for me because I rarely drop any high kills on this map. This map's really annoying and hard for me, but I was able to do it on Force Sensitivity and this just shows that, like I said, the lower sensitivity really helps with your centering and it helps you make better decisions. So I'm just going to show you how I got all these kills and how I was able to win the game at the end but the loadout I was using here I was using mainly the M4A1 knife to speed boost EOD because this map they do throw a lot of grenades and it's really annoying ghost in case they have UAVs because if, if they see you on the UAV you're dead it's you got to be very strategic on this map and then tune up so I can get dead silence really fast and then these I don't really care about specialists I just have it there to have it maybe I'll change it in the future and then I got a thermite for riot shields and a stim so it's let's get into it all right so first route I take let's see I go straight up the stairs okay it's pretty pretty good spot to go up the stairs usually I look at the window right here yep at the window there they go there a lot they rush there a lot so if you want to pre-aim that Ah, uh, I knew someone was going to be up there, but since I got shot, I ran away and stimmed. And then, well, I repeat it, yes, because my teammate's there. So I assumed he killed them or they ran away from that spot. Able to plant here. I think I did the same technique. Yep, I I um, planted most of it on the side that I didn't want it to be on because I was in cover from other people. And then I planted it on this side because I knew most of my teammates were going to be on this side of the map. And they're going to be able to watch it. And I can camp this doorway right here. So at any time I can see the bomb. All right, so I run away a little bit because I know there's a person right there because everybody's chasing him down, and I leave the bomb open. Now sometimes I like to leave the bomb a little bit open because if the enemies know that there's nobody on the bomb, they're gonna go and defuse. So you leave the bomb open for a little bit, and it takes five seconds for them to defuse the bomb. So you leave it open for a little bit, and you automatically rush back. And a lot of times this works because you catch a lot of people off guard. But it is a risky move though, especially if it's 3-1. to one. And I do have my teammate watching the bomb, so I knew it was safe. I see him right here. He, he actually caught me a little bit off guard. I was going to use my knife and then just run up top. And I saw him right there, so I switched back real quick. I used the stairs as cover. And as soon as he's shooting at my head, I just straight up shoot him in the face. Because since I have 4 sensitivity, I was able to align myself perfectly with his body. And I trusted my shot more than I felt like I had to jump and use movement or anything. Yeah, bro. Bro, relax, bro, relax, relax. I think I take a different route here. I, I started muting everybody because it was getting pretty annoying. I was trying to concentrate. Yeah, I'm taking down here. Usually, I look at the same spot up there on the stairs, right? Someone pops up in here. Kill him real quick. Check in that same top area. I usually don't check there too long, though. Because they do have the advantage by looking down. gets killed there so right now I'm just I'm just thinking about where should I look because we killed most of the people there's one person left let me just stick with my teammates because if he kills one of us we're, we're just gonna immediately team up on him here's someone over here and then I I know he's back there because he killed them from the left with a vow and here I'm very careful because if he has a vow I don't want to go up and push him because he's mostly gonna kill me and he's probably just camping back there so I'm just playing angles. I'm trying to make sure he doesn't pass a certain point, and we're just trying to keep him trapped back there because we got 30 seconds on the bomb. Again, watching. I think I see him right here, and then I chow. He's behind the car, so I backed up a little bit, and my teammate got him. I think I rushed the same route this time. Yep. There's a bad peak. That's why I'm not really looking at anybody. He gets shot, the enemy gets shot up there, so I try to shoot again. And then right here, I'm just watching my back. It's 3 to 5, so I'm playing really slow right now. If I do too much, if I do too much movement, I'm going to get killed because they have more people than us. I hear somebody break open the door, so I pray in the door. I, as soon as I see him peek a little bit, I plan on shooting through the door. So you can see right here. I plan on shooting through the door just so I can get the advantage, but he popped out anyways and just got himself killed, so... And then I take this spot up here because 
there's there's four people so if i get here i get a good angle and there's most likely going to be somebody just running through trying to finish us off there goes one i don't repeat the same spot because he's going to call me out i'm drop shotting to lower my hitbox two two i use dead silence I'm just checking each corner because I don't know where he's at. Most likely on the right. Yep, got him. Drop shot. It's the jump shot. And then we kill him. This one, I, I tried the MP5. I was like, I'm using the M4 a lot. Let me try for more close range. And then I switched to EOD instead of double time because they throw a lot of grenades at this point. There we go, the grenades. And I didn't want to die. Slide drop shot. They go here a lot. So I was able to pick up a kill there. And I'm just playing super slow because if I go out too fast, they're going to surprise me with the numbers. Three, four. I threw a thermite there because I didn't want him to re-peek. If he re-peeked, I would have hurt him a little bit and then probably finished him off the B5. And they go here a lot, so I'm just checking here slowly. There we go, I got one. And I'm going straight down here because most likely going to rush middle. They're going to be like, oh, my teammate died from upstairs. So let me run around and rush middle and then I might catch him off guard. So I'm running down here expecting someone to be here. No one's there. Bomb's right on me. So I'm just like laying down near bomb. Kill one up there and then it's a 1v1. And here I heard him over here. So I was like, all right, let me stand in the spot right here and get my knife out. I think I do right here. And I'm like, okay, so if he has a Val or a 725, he's going to come up and try to kill me like instantly. But if I have my knife out, I can get the surprise on him, especially if he's running up, and then I can knife him for an instant kill. So I'm just waiting. I don't hear anything, too. I don't hear one thing. And then I get finished. So this only happens because he had dead silence. If he didn't have dead silence, I would have heard him turn around and shot him in the face. So I could just I could have just been like in this corner holding the spot here, but the problem with that is if he had a Val or seven two five, I think he did. Yeah, he had a Val right here. If he turns this corner, I would have been most likely dead. Only I would only would have killed him if he would have had, like if we would have just kept running in a straight line and he didn't have, like if he was super surprised. But I was doing like I was playing a big risk here. I was trying to kill him fast, but not watch my back, and then he ended up using dead silence. Okay, so next round. I'm rushing. I already rushed. I already killed the guy on the one spot in the middle. So I go on this spot. In case he checks that one spot, I can catch him off guard right here. I have an M4 too, so I can play range. Because if you have an M4, you're better at long ranges. So that spot is still good with an M4. It's just not as good as holding right here. And usually they think I'm in the head glitch. So if I'm on the ground here, they're really not going to expect anything. And then I push up because my teammates pushed up. And then I go back. So I'm like, okay, my teammate died there. Why would I push there? Especially when I have an M4. Why would I push that spot when it's close range and he died there? So I jump up on here. Usually this is not a common spot people are. So if I'm right here, he could either run past and not look at me or someone could be right here. I jump up here. Nobody's there. I'm holding this angle. Don't see anybody. I jump and immediately check right there. Because usually most people are all the way up there, and it's a really risky spot. Plus, I have an M4, so I can most likely kill somebody there. But this guy caught me off guard, and since I have a low sensitivity, I was able to easily track onto his body right here. So let's look at that again. So I look there, right? Look up top. And then look. Easily able to, since I have low sensitivity, track right onto his body. And then I get the kill. That's the whole reason why I have four sensitivity. And then here, I'm like, all right, maybe if I get in this spot, it'll be really good. Because they don't see me there often. We killed one, so I'm like, okay, it's a two on one. I'm going to start, I guess, making my way towards A. Because I already checked B. He's not going to play at B if we just checked there and we just cleared that spot. Watching my teammates back a little bit. I look to the left because my teammates are already looking at the right. So we can cover the most places possible. I check up there again, then I check down. I realize, oh, he has the bomb, the guy I killed. So let me just watch the bomb. 
check up there again. And I'm just confused where he's at. Oh, I see him on the ground. A jump shot. It's the drop shot. And then it's a kill. Alright, so it's 4 1. We're winning. Doing pretty good. I used the uh, MP5 this time because I want to play closer range. If I if I play long range all the time, that is that could work, but I like switching it up so my teammates don't predict exactly where I am. Uh, I take this spot right here. If I ha didn't have dead silence, I think it would be smarter if I ran through the door. Because if I ran through the door, I can instantly peek this spot and kill him. But since I had dead silence, I wanted to surprise him and catch them off guard. And that's the reason I died. So he had dead silence too. And he was able to aim and look in that direction. He didn't miss the first few shots, but then he got right onto my body. I'm pushing this way. I have my stim because I want to rush. And then I get on top of here. But this is actually a pretty bad spot. Um, I say when you're trying to rush in this map, don't ever rush middle. Because if the teammates, or if the enemy is really smart, they're going to go and just throw grenades like they did right there. This middle spot is very big on grenade throws. So whatever you do, don't rush straight down this spot unless you just want to get like... Unless you just want to rush and take the big risk. Okay, right here. Next round, I switched from stim to a smoke. I felt like maybe if I can smoke some areas out, it would let me pass more because offense is really hard to do on this map. So I wait a little bit for the grenades because I knew that I got needed last time. I threw a smoke down here so I can cover that spot. And since I cover that spot, they're most likely not going to push and I can focus right here. Someone was there, and then I lose this gunfight right here. So, what happened was I have an MP5, right? So, right here, this is a bad angle. If he had like an SMG, I would have won, but since he well, he actually did have an SMG, but he had an Uzi, which Uzi is extremely good for longer ranges. So, he had an Uzi, he was able to see my exact position and then kill me fast. Even though, look, I got the first two, three shots off, but since he had an Uzi, he just straight up murdered me. So I should have had an M4 in that situation, or maybe an Uzi, then I would have killed him. Because I was pre-aiming that spot, and I did have the advantage. So I, get, I carry out my M4, and I'm like, well, I was doing really good with my M4. I was playing really long angles. Let me do the same thing here. I go up. I never really hold this position, because usually they don't push super fast. But I think that since they had... Um, since they just have four and we have four two, they're going to play really aggressive. They probably think like, oh, we're doing really good against these people. So let's rush. And let's just try to finish them off real quick. My teammates are already pushing up middle and I got teammates moving up to the left too. So I think the best position for me would be right here because I don't want to be right next to them and then die with them. So I take right here. I don't expect too many people to go through here. So I don't expect to get a kill. I'm just, I'm just holding this angle. But someone does rush down the middle. So... I get an easy kill right there. I check again just in case. My teammates are pushing up, so I think now is probably the best time to support them. I check left because nobody's checking left. Oh, I grab a... This is a thing a lot of CDL pros do. So look, I have an M4, right? I see right here, this guy has an MP5. This is good for close range. My M4 is good for long range. So I pick it up just in case I go into any close range fights. And then I use, switch to my M4 real quick because remember I died when I used the MP5 in this range. So I used the M4. I see him. I'm just shooting him. I didn't really get the kill, but hopefully my teammate upstairs can get him. And then I hear uh, the missile right here, the cruise missile. So I'm just fully sprinting all the way to cover so it doesn't kill me. And while I'm sprinting, the guy comes right here and shoots at me. I think he has a vow. This was really like, I couldn't really center onto this guy. Like, uh, turn around and shoot him really good because I was running from the missile. But I ended up still turning on him. Remember, I'm on 4-4 sensitivity, so you can still st turn on people really good when you're on slow sensitivity. And look again. You can turn really good. You don't gotta be like, oh, I gotta play high sensitivity so I can turn on people. No, look at this. Look at this. He got turned on. And I used my M4 because I was about to check up here. So it's a good thing I had MP5 too. I, I might have lost that if I had an M4 at one. But I had a close range gun. I see a guy up there. I kill him really good. Somebody shoots at me up here too. So I turn around quick. Start shooting at him. And then I see him down there. So I'm just shooting real quick. 
And then obviously he's running in this side, so he's gonna come out in here. So I'm just aiming here. I don't have time to chase him. Plus, the, my teammate DK is already chasing him. So I'm just holding this angle right here. And then he re peeks and he's dead. And then I fully rush this side because I'm like, okay, my two teammates are here. I have dead silence. I'm gonna fully rush to B and then hopefully I can catch him off guard. And then they did have uh, mines right here, so I quickly went prone so I didn't get killed by the mines. And then I used my stim. And then I have 12 bullets too, so if I get in a fight with somebody, I gotta make sure I hit every single shot. I throw a thermite here because I'm like, okay, most likely he's gonna be in this spot because I haven't seen him yet. Reload my MP5 so I can push him. But he's not there. He's at our spawn. So I'm pushing with the M4. Again, I had 12 bullets, but I didn't. I don't think the bullets was the issue. I think it was probably just too close of a range where I should have used the MP5. But I really did have confidence in my M4, so I still pushed him anyways, and then I ended up losing that gunfight. And he had a close range vow too. He didn't have like a far range vow, so he was able to, I guess, just instantly headshot me with the fastest time to kill gun possible. Alright, so 4-5. For us to win this game, we have to win two rounds in a row. This is the, the, the tricky part. It's really scary too because a lot of times your teammates lose confidence in themselves. But you gotta try your best to keep the confidence and really believe that you can actually win the, win the round. But they needed me right here. Again, I had EOD. If I didn't have EOD, I would have died. I don't use EOD on every single map. But it is really good to have, and it helped me right there. So I use the same spot again, like I said before. Because sometimes, if I had glitch, they're gonna kill me, cause they'll expect me there. I hear a precision airstrike, so I don't know where it's coming from. I just try to get to the farthest side of the map as possible, because usually they wouldn't throw it at B. They're not gonna be like, "Oh, they're at B. I'm gonna throw it there." Usually, they throw it at middle. So I'm like, "All right, let me run all the way over here," and I didn't die, so I was happy. 2v6 and this this part I was like dude 2v6 this is gonna be rough I'm gonna have to make sure I hit every single bullet and kill everybody one by one and I get shot right here which is very bad because it's a 2v6 and they know my exact location so go behind here heal real quick I run away or I pretend to run away because I need to cover it and I want them to think I'm going over there and then I quickly rechallenge, use the head glitch Kill him, I see another one. Rechallenge him again, but I didn't get the kill. Now it's a one oh snap. Now it's a one V five. So again, they're all gonna rest my location. They just need one more point to win. One V five. I reload right here, use Dead Silence, because Dead Silence is really overpowered and it's probably the only shot I got against these people. Most likely they're gonna be still looking from middle, so I'm gonna try to take out the people on A. Because why would I challenge people who know where I'm at? I'd rather challenge the people who don't know where I'm at. Again, I catch this guy off guard. I think he had an MP5, but I was still able to beat him with an M4 just because I had really good centering right there. I kill him right there, so most likely they're going to rush. They're going to play, oh, he's right here. So they're going to rush all the way around. And then here I play a little, I wait a little bit because they're probably going to push in twos and threes. They're going to like push with all they have. So if I fight all of them at once, I'm going to die. So I play more patient. I hear one. I think I hear one by himself, so that's why I push him really fast. I have an M4. He has a Val, so he should easily beat me, but I'm able to catch him off guard, and I'm able to center right on his body. So easy kill for me. I hear another one right here. I don't have time to reload. I know I only have 23 bullets, right? But you don't have time to reload if the whole team is trying to push you. So I quickly hear him, and I push drop shot. Drop shotting is really good with assault rifles. Able to catch him off guard because he's trying to rush me. And he can't get out of the auto attack sprint while I'm aiming at his body. 1v2. And then I run quickly this way. This is probably a lot better because middle is more open. And if somebody's camping up in the top place, they're going to easily destroy me if I'm in the middle. So go in here. Drop shot again. Drop shotting is really good for making your hitbox small. And you can see, uh, you can catch a lot of people off guard and they can, it's hard for them to see you. So I catch this guy off guard, I shoot him a little bit, and I finally see the one guy running upstairs. And then I just heavy push him. Again, I have 14 bullets, I don't reload. 
because I want to I see him and I want to rush him as soon as possible. If I don't rush him, he's going to keep changing positions and I'm going to die. So I ended up get that getting that kill. Uh I aced that round and that was a crucial round to win the game. Now it's going to be 5-5. We got one more round left. And the last round, I think I still use the M4 because I really trust my shot. I rush over here. I think I stim. Or not. I think, yeah. I Sometimes I save my stims just in case I get grenaded like right there. I'll, I'm able to heal real fast since I'm able to stim real quick and I can get in better positions fast. I don't have to wait for myself to heal. They're shooting right there. I'm just holding this box. I know they're going to be right there. I don't want to push them super fast because sometimes they wait for you. And he like, sometimes he shoots up there and then looks over here real quick. So I'm just waiting to catch him off guard. Waiting for him to shoot again. And then I'm able to catch him off guard right there. Didn't expect me. He dies right here, so I push him really fast, and then I got the kill. And then I went 22 and 5. And then I unmute them, because it's the end of the game. I was on a mission, hey, bro. So you should go watch that video by DK, bro. You should go watch it. You need it more. Uh, I had 116 FOV for this one. Because if you put lower FOVs, they do, uh, you see more people and you get more aim assist. So I tried out 116. I also wanted to show my settings right after too, just so I can prove that I am on 4-4 sensitivity and why I do think it's really good. DK is sealed, bro. <laughs> <laughs>